Hello, this is Mr. McMurray, and welcome to another exciting day of Physics in Paradise. All right. Um, here, things are situated here. All right, we're going to do the Simple Machine Mechanical Advantage Worksheet. Hopefully, this will be fun, 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 right? Well, maybe not, but still, uh, it'll be endure endurable. All right, so uh, a couple things. First of all, I'll give you some formulas. You need to make sure you have the uh, ideal mechanical advantage is the effort distance divided by the resistance distance. Or on a lever, it can be the effort arm divided by the resistance arm. Okay. For a actual mechanical advantage is the effort force, the amount of force you actually use, divided by the resistance force. Okay. And then finally, efficiency, which is the work output divided by work input times 100. And I guess there's one more I should put up there, and I did not. So let's do that real quick. Um, Again, so I can get there. All right, and um, work input is equal to the effort force times the effort distance. All right, and work output is equal to the resistance force times. Resistance distance. Okay, there we go. And so that should pretty well put you with all the formulas you need. Isn't that enough? All right. So here we go. Uh, let's just look at the first example, and then we'll go from there. We'll talk about some of these. We won't go over all the details. Let you do some of the work yourself. But um, anyhow, it says a man uses two single pulleys to lift a barrel 2.53 meters. To do this, he has to pull the rope a distance of 5.32 meters using 446 newtons of force, what is the IMA and AMA of the pulleys, okay? So, IMA, first of all, the distances, question is, what are the distances, okay? Well, the distance he lifts the barrel would be the, um, let me try that again, all right, distance, distance, the amount of rope he pulls through here, would be the effort distance. I'm just, instead of doing the subscript, just save time. I'm going to put dr and d. All right. And so uh, basically, that's our two there. So for your IMA, you could just put the effort distance, which is how far he pulled the rope. Three, two. Divided by the distance he lifted the barrel, which is 2.53. And since they're both meters, the meters would cancel. And that should give you a nice simple number. All right. Now, remember sig digs. So they have three sig digs on each of these. So your answer should have three sig digs. That's right. Good job. All right. So um, that would be how you would do that. The actual mechanical advantage would have to do with the effort force that he had to use. All right. And we know his effort force. It says he used 446 newtons. So that up there would be his effort force right there. And this number down here on the barrel tells you how much it weighs, 869 newtons. And so you can use that to find his actual mechanical advantage. All right. Then you would take your effort force, which is up here, times your effort distance, which we said was, uh, what, um, 5.32. All right. And calculate the work input. The work output would be the resistance, which would be force, which would be the weight times the distance it went up, which I believe was 2.53. And you multiply those two to get your work output. Then you take your work output, divide it by your work input, and times 100 to get your efficiency. Remember, the efficiency will be a percent. Okay, so I uh, just real quickly, <coughs> let me do that again. Work input is going to be equal to the effort force, which is... 446 newtons times the uh, effort distance, which we said was 5.32 meters. All right, we would multiply that, and you would use three sig digs in your answer, and uh, it would be newton meters or joules. Okay, your work output, again, would be the resistance force, which is 800 and 69 newtons times the resistance, which was 
five, three, right, and that would also equal. Now, obviously this one has a greater force, but it has a shorter distance. This one has a shorter distance, a uh, shorter force, smaller force, but it takes you to pull a longer distance on it, which we said is kind of how machines work a lot of the time. All right, then you would take your work output, divide it by your work input, and then times 100 to get your percent efficiency. All right. Um, a couple other things let's talk about before we get on. Um, on this one, you have the crows. All the crows have a mass of 3.87, so every one of them has 3.87. Crows B, C, and D are 1.3 feet, 2.4 feet, and 3.3 feet. So that's 1, 2, 3. This one's 1.3, this one's 2.4, and that one's 3.3. Okay, now it wants to know how far does this crow have to be from the man's shoulder in order to balance it, since it's balanced. Okay, and then it wants to know the torque that um, it exerts on the thing. Okay, well, first of all, we need to remember that torque is equal to the force times the arm length. Now, if it's, um, if you have to worry about the um, effort force, it'd be effort force times effort arm. If it's resistance torque, then it would be the resistance force times the resistance arm. Okay, in this point in case, it doesn't really matter what you call them. It means the same difference. Keep in mind, for this one, though, you have three different torques. Each crow puts a different torque on there. So the torque of all those crows put together would be the first one is 1.3 feet times its mass, which is 3.78. I should have put that in parentheses. We'll put that in parentheses. Uh, plus the torque of the second crow, which would be 2.4 feet times his mass or force, the force of him. Uh, oh. My bad. Okay. Uh, we need to do this first. We need to change this from mass back to newtons. So first of all, we need to do 3.78 times 9.8. Okay. And that will get you his newtons. Okay. So let me do that real quick. Calculator. Okay. So we would do 3.78. Seven eight times nine point eight equals thirty seven point zero. Okay. All right. So the torque is going to be the original answer had three sig digs. The final one has to do also so point zero newtons. Okay, and it should be three point four times. 37.0 plus the final crow, which is 3.3 um, times 37.0. All right, now that will give you the total torque for that side. Then you would set the mass of uh, you, the crow here, which is the we know the newtons of him, the crow would be 37.0 all right times x which in this case is the torque is equal to uh, the total torque whatever you got here put that answer there because we know the torque has to be the same on both sides since it's balanced and then you would just divide both sides by 37 to get the how far the crow is, the distance that the crow is from the man's shoulder. Because remember, it's torque times the arm length, and we're trying to find the arm length. Now, once you have the arm length, you can plug that back in and calculate how much torque crow A exerts on the rod. Or if you think smartly, there's a quicker way to do it than that, but I'll leave that to you. All right, on a ramp, um, I'm not going to do this one for you, but I will remind you that if you are pushing something up the ramp, that is the what distance? That's correct. That is the uh, effort distance because that's where you're putting in your effort. Oops. Okay. And how far it ends up off the ground is your 
resistance distance, okay, which would be that. Now, the weight of the object is going to be the resistance force. All right, and how far it takes to push it up would be your effort force, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, now, um, this one's a little bit different. A bicycle is gear, okay? It's a uh, wheel and axle, which is a type of pulley, uh, not pulley, I assume a type of uh, lever, okay? But basically what we're gonna do is count the number of spoke uh, or little uh, cogs on this gear, the front gear, and count the number on the last one. You have to zoom it up a little bit so you can do that. All right, since this is where we push on it, this is gonna be the effort, all right? So we're gonna do the effort cogs, all right, divided by the resistance of the ones we're moving here. And that will tell you uh, how many times the wheels will go around uh, each time you turn the pedals, okay? Well, or actually, yeah, um, just take the bigger number divided by the smaller number, all right? Um, if it goes around more than once, and that would multiply your distance, okay? All right, so if you take the number of things here divided by the number of things here, that will tell you how many times they'll both go around. And if it's greater than one, uh, then uh, that would multiply the distance. So that means every time you go here, then that one's gonna go around more than once. And um, we'll see. Uh, basically, uh, if this one has less cogs, it's harder to turn, so it takes more force, but it multiplies your distance, okay? If this one has more cogs, then it makes it easier, but it doesn't turn as far so you don't get as much distance. So you'll just have to kind of look at that and, and figure out what you think it will do. All right. Um, <clears throat> the fly head screw, uh, once again, remember, is an inclined plane, all right, just like that Oops, that's it that way so you can see the blue line all right what was the blue line okay now you remember an inclined plane a screw is just an inclined plane wrapped around a post so if we wrap the post around it like so and we line it up all right notice that the length of the threads if we spread those threads out that would be the effort distance right whereas how long the screw is okay roll it back up again real quick All right, how long the screw is would be like the height of the inclined plane. And so that would be your resistance distance. Okay, so keep that in mind. Other than that, it's just like an inclined plane. All right, Blech. my mouth's getting all dry here. Okay, uh, once again, we've got torque. All right, I think you can figure that out. Um, all right, over here you have a um, broom. All right. Uh, part of the hardest part is you need to label things. Remember how far the resistance moves and how far the effort moves. The resistance down here, the effort is here because it's a third class lever. And um, remember the distance they move are the effort and resistance distance. How long it is from the fulcrum to each of those is going to be the um, effort arm, either resist, effort, effort arm or the resistance arm, depending on which it is, okay? All right, a couple other things. Uh, with a screw, is a wheel and axle. So the radius acts like the effort arm. And so obviously the handle is the effort arm. Down here would be the resistance arm. That's where you're turning the screw. Uh, <clears throat> a wedge is once again, just like an inclined plane. The total distance, then instead of moving something up the plane, now we're pushing the wedge into the object, but still the effort distance is gonna be here. The resistance distance up there. And uh, that one I think is pretty straightforward, the screw. Uh, once again, this is like a um, wheel and axle, and they're giving you the distance here, the radius, or the, or the basically this would be like your effort arm and your resistance arm. However, notice that you have 33 centimeters and 3.3 meters, okay? So make sure you get those in the same units, okay? Uh, I think most of the others are in the same units, but you need to be careful for that. Oh, one other thing up here, yes. Uh, on the broom, notice that this is 9.5 centimeters. That would be 0 0.095 meters. All right. Um, other than that, I think most of it's there. Good luck. Let me know if you have issues, and I will try to help you out on that. Have a good day.